Jesus said, uh, in the last days, there's going to be many false prophets. Paul talks about how there will be many false teachers. We see, I believe it's First John, where it talks about how the spirit of the Antichrist has already gone out into the world. The reason I say all that is because I've been praying about this heavily. Lord, who do I listen to? Who do I not listen to? Is there anything you want me to say against some of these things I've seen, I'm hearing? How do I have discernment for this stuff? And many people have those same questions. As I've been praying about this, the Lord has begun to speak to me about it. And he actually gave me a prophetic message about false prophets. I'm going to be sharing that. And then I'm going to be sharing a very simple message I received from Jesus. And then I'm going to be sharing five signs of a false prophet. So these are things that you can take. These are scriptural truths that you can take, you can use to judge. Is this person from the Lord? Are they not? And listen, these will work. They will work. The scripture does not return void, the word of God. Like these are things that God has given us because he loves the body. He loves the church and he does not want us to be walking around in deception. He does not want us to be walking around wondering what's true and what's not. We can know. Okay. Now, what we do with what we know, then we're going to have to take what we know to the Holy Spirit and ask and say, now what's the next step, right? But we can know if we should be listening to someone or not. Okay, so this is November 16th. This is what I saw and heard from the Lord. I saw this vision of an ear and it was very vivid and it was on a person on the side of a head, obviously an ear, and it had lots of little arrows that were stuck in it. Like they look like little toy arrows, but they were real and they were all like someone had been shooting with a bow and arrow. And they were all sticking out of someone's ear. And it looked almost like hundreds of little needles sticking out of an ear in different directions. And then I heard this phrase. I heard the Lord say, they've gotten into the deep side of things and they can't get out again. And then he said, there is a group in the church that thinks they are listening to wisdom. And yet they are hearing the very things their itching ears want to hear. And it's disguised under the guise of being profound. So this is a warning from the Holy Spirit. He's saying there's a group that has fallen into this category. And listen, I'm going to put myself here into the same boat for now because we all fall down this slope at some point in some way. Some people of a greater extent than others. You know, there's not one of us that's always gotten everything right. So before you start pointing fingers at this group or whatever, I would encourage you to look at it from that perspective. Yet at the same time, that's not an excuse to keep going further down that slope, that slippery slope. Okay. I heard the Lord say this next. He said, yet it's not from me. He said, my word did not go forth. And yet these people are saying, give us a word from God. And the prophet gives it without blushing. So the Lord's talking about false prophecy here. And then I heard the Lord say this. He said, this is a movement in the church away from sound doctrine and into heresy and even into the occult. It's witchcraft disguised as prophetic teaching. Y'all, sometimes somebody can be speaking from their own mind, calling it prophecy. It's just an assumption or a presumption that they have. Other times it can be a quote unquote prophetic word. It can be something they're calling prophecy, but it can be from a familiar spirit or from a demonic spirit. And I believe that that can be even worse than presumptuous prophecy. And then I heard the Lord say this, and he asked this as a question to the body. He said, but if they are not teaching truth from my word, why are you listening to them? Why give them the time of day? And then the Lord asked this, and this is sarcasm, y'all. And he said, why not settle for heresy itself? Why go into the occult and witchcraft and watch your lives be destroyed? Now, this is harsh, y'all. This is a, a, a blunt truth. But I'm going to show you in scripture that the Holy Spirit is not exaggerating here. Like this is something we already know is going to happen. The scripture already says this is going to happen. Okay. But what is he talking about here? He's saying this is even worse than just something that's heretical. Now, somebody can believe something that's off doctrinally and they can still be saved. Okay. But that doesn't make heresy good and it doesn't make believing an error right. We should be corrected if we're in that place. We should be allowing the Holy Spirit to correct us. But the Lord's saying sarcastically, why not just settle for heresy? He's saying, he's saying some of these things are even worse than that. They go so far as all the way into the occult and witchcraft. And they're saying they're just, these things are destroying people's lives. That's what the Lord is saying here. And then I heard Jesus say this next, y'all. And it's very different when I, when I sense the presence of Jesus Christ. And I heard him say this as a friend to me. And, and this is right after I heard this prophetic word. I heard him say, it's crazy what people will get into when they don't know the truth. Listen, I believe that Jesus said this to me because he loves his bride. He loves the church and he does not want us to 
be deceived and he does not want us to be walking around in deception because he does not want us to get hurt. Jesus says this in Matthew 24, 11. He says, many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. He's talking about the end times. He's saying the closer we get to the end, the more this is going to be happening. Many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. He doesn't say some. He doesn't say, he says many. So we know if you look out at all the prophetic voices online, listen, or, or anywhere in the world, you can know that many of them, a large percentage are false. I don't know what that percentage is, but Jesus said many. First John 4, 1, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We see it again, many false prophets. But we should test is what the word says. Test the spirit. See if it's from God or not. How do you test the spirit? How do you test, especially when you're not the one hearing from the spirit, right? You're not the one listening to, is this God that they're listening to? Is this something else? Like what's going on here? If you're not the one hearing and you're hearing it through the third party, how do you test that, right? The word gives us the key, okay? These are five signs of a false prophet. You could also apply this to a false teacher. Number one, they draw you away from Jesus. So this is the first and the greatest test. Listen, this, I'm going to read this verse, and then I'm going to, I'm going to explain what this means. 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Listen, there should never, ever, ever be anything that's so spiritually, quote unquote, deep that it leads us astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Nothing. I mean, okay, I'm going to throw myself into the line of fire here, okay? Because the Word of God also teaches about how some people have taken their stands on visions they have seen. And listen, I'm on here sharing a whole lot of visions, y'all, a whole lot of prophetic words. But I am never going to take my stand on those things that I've seen. I'm going to take my stand on the gospel truth. Because that is the truth that's actually going to set people free. And I'm always going to come at it from a perspective of, hey, please take it to the Lord in prayer. Why? Because I know I am not a perfect human being. Jesus is the only perfect human being. So what's the foundation I'm standing on? It is not my prophetic gift. It's not the things I've seen and heard. It's the gospel message, the gospel truth, because I know that that is never going to change. And that's what everyone needs to hear. Not everybody needs to hear these prophetic words that I'm sharing, but everybody needs to hear the gospel. Do you see the difference there? But some people take what they would call secret knowledge, the word calls secret knowledge, and they exalt it above Jesus Christ and knowing him personally and simply knowing the truth of God's word, and what it says about what Jesus did for us at the cross. And they distort the gospel and they keep people from actually coming to Jesus. And a lot of times people don't even realize it's happening. This would be my encouragement to you. This is the first sign of a false prophet, false teacher. They draw you away from Jesus. My encouragement would be examine the person you're listening to and see, are they actually drawing me closer to Jesus? Or are they pulling me away even in a subtle way? Or are they putting the focus on something else? See, a lot of times this is how, they'll, this is how it works. It's not that they won't talk about Jesus at all. It's that they'll put the focus on something else and they'll exalt something else. And Jesus becomes a secondary issue, a secondary option, when that's never the way it was meant to be. It says, for if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, this you tolerate very well. So that this is what the scripture's warning us about in 2 Corinthians 11. 1 John 4, 2 says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and now is already in the world. This is not saying that they will never mention Jesus' name. Yeah, I mean, the Word of God says even the demons believe that Jesus is the Son of God, right? So even someone speaking by a familiar spirit or being influenced by a demon can still say things about Jesus. They can still speak truths about Jesus, technically. But what is their focus and what are they pointing to for hope? See, that's, that's the difference. What are they pointing you to put your faith into? Is it into Jesus or is it into this thing that you need to have in your house or this thing that you need to have under your pillow or this thing that you need to, you know, it's like, it's, it's, do you see the difference there? It's like you're put, taking your faith out of Jesus. Like he is my hope. Even if everything else is lost, even if everything else goes bad, my hope is in Jesus and that will never change because he never changes. Versus, well, yeah, I need Jesus. He's good. Thank you. But also, I'm really hoping that this thing comes through for me. Do you see the difference there? And this is what I've noticed, y'all. Just to be honest, I've noticed for some people, it's even hard for them to talk about Jesus. And I believe that's a clear sign that something is wrong. There's something wrong there. 
This is the second sign, okay, of a, of a false prophet or false teacher. The Holy Spirit is not confirming them. And he does this in many ways. The first way that someone can be confirmed by the Holy Spirit is while you're listening to them, he's going to bring verses to your mind that confirm what they're saying. And he's going to say, hey, yeah, that, that's what you were reading last night in this verse here. They're saying the exact same thing here. And you're like, wow, okay, that's awesome. He'll use them to confirm things he's already speaking to you. But also the Holy Spirit wants to confirm if someone is from him or not and is speaking by the Spirit or not by simply responding to you when you ask. So if you haven't prayed about that person and said, Lord, is this person hearing from you? Are they really from you? Pray. Don't, don't keep going down that path until you stop and you pray and say, Lord, I want to hear from you clearly about this. I need to know. I need to know, Lord, what you say about them. If the Lord gives you that check mark, if the Lord signs off on them, great. But if not, don't keep going down that slope. 1 John 4, 13 says, By this we know that we remain in him and he in us because he has given to us of his spirit. So the Holy Spirit inside of us is the assurance that we belong to Jesus, but he's also the standard, right? So if somebody is operating by a different spirit, they're not going to meet the standard that the Holy Spirit has, and the Holy Spirit is inside of us, right? And these are some of the evidences that the Holy Spirit is not confirming someone, right? Okay, what do we receive when we have the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Think about this. How is your peace since you started listening to that person? You have more of the peace of the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you have more joy? Do you have more love in your heart? Like, are these things that you're experiencing, or is there always this weird anxiety associated with listening to them? And maybe it goes away while you're listening, but then it's like, ah, it's like anytime you think about them or, you, or you're like, oh, I missed their message today, you're always feeling anxious or something like that. It's like, that is not a fruit of the Spirit. And maybe, maybe this is connecting with some people right now. But listen, the difference is somebody who's speaking the truth of God's word and the Holy Spirit inside of you is rejoicing at that truth, you're going to see an evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in your life, the peace of God in your life, and it's going to be overflowing out of your walk with the Holy Spirit, not just your time listening to that person. So if you always have to go back to them to get what they're giving you, you know, like it's like, wow, you've done so much for my walk, you know, but it only happens when you're listening to them. There's a problem there. That means it's the words of the wise. It's, it's, it's deep things, it's quote unquote profound things, but it's it's not God things. Because when it's coming from God, His truths, they start to breed peace and life in every area of our life because the Holy Spirit's walking with us. And it's through our relationship with Him. There's also the discerning of the Spirit's gift in 1 Corinthians 12, 10. So I recently released a video about that and I, I would encourage you to go watch it if you haven't. And I'll put that link below. If I remember to do that, below this video on YouTube in the description so that you can dive into that. But you can also study it for yourself in other ways. Um, and that's a gift of the Spirit that allows us to know if a spirit is from God or not. And it, and sometimes the Lord will even use like things like visions, like prophetic words. He'll give us different evidences that allow us to understand if this is from God or not. But this is the third point. Five signs of a false prophet or false teacher. The third sign is they have been proven to be false. So now this is something that gets a little sticky because... There's a lot of heresy hunters online that are that have quote unquote proven people to be her heretics or to be false teachers or false prophets or whatever. So everybody's been quote unquote proven to be false in somebody's eyes, right? But what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the Bible believing, spirit filled Christians who love the Word of God, love Jesus, love the Holy Spirit, and who have found a serious concern about somebody or they found some serious errors in somebody's teaching or the way that they're living their life or something like that. And they've addressed the body and said, Hey, this is a serious issue. Listen, those concerns we should be willing to listen to. And we should be able to quickly see, is this actually a real concern? Is this really a scriptural issue or is it not? Is this somebody just hating because they're jealous or they're being overly critical or something like that? But listen, if we're unwilling to look at the concerns, that means that we are unwilling to find the truth because we should be willing to at least listen to what they have to say. And look at this. This is 1 John 4, 6. And this is that same chapter. It's talking about knowing if a spirit is from God or not, right? It says, we are from God. The one who knows God listens to us. The one who is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So what is John writing here? He's saying, hey, there's a standard that the community of believers has knowledge about. And when you're unwilling to listen to those who you know, they know the Lord, you know they love the Lord, 
you know that they have your best interest in mind, right? You know that they're walking by the spirit. You know that they're following the truth of God's word. If you're unwilling to listen to the concerns they have when they say, hey, watch out for that person, you know, like then there's something going wrong. Now you may listen to some evidence that someone puts against somebody and it might be a false accusation. They might be wrong to do that. It might be a, a critical video that God did not ask them to make, right? And that shouldn't hurt us. We should be willing to look at that and go, mm, yeah, no, I think they missed it on that, but we should be able to forgive them for that and move on. But if somebody has a serious concern and they're actually showing how someone is directly opposing the word of God in the scripture, we need to take that into account. We need to take that into consideration. This is number four sign of a false prophet, false teacher. They are without the love of Christ. So this is 1 John 4, 8. It says, the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. This is the same chapter talking about how do we know if someone's from God or not, right? It's saying if they don't love, they don't know God because God is love. It's talking about the love of Christ. So if we listen to someone and what it breeds inside of us is hatred for one another, some voices, what they end up doing is they replicate the critical spirit that they are of. You know, in some cases, somebody's false because they're not walking by the spirit of God. They're walking by a critical spirit, right? And they're replicating that and they're just causing believers to hate each other. That's also false. You know, if someone's over here doing witchcraft or the occult or something, that's, that's bad. That's false, right? But also... On the other side of the fence, there can be a form of false teaching that is simply tearing everybody down and is causing us to lose our love for one another. That same chapter, 1 John 4, this is verse 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. So people should be pointing us to the love of Christ and that should be changing our hearts so that we love each other. It says, if someone says, I love God and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. So I've seen some ministries that their whole purpose is to tear people down. And I would show them this verse. If I was speaking to them face to face, I would say, hey, in love, how is what you're doing? How is that showing people the love of Christ? It sounds more like you're hating your brother or sister. And that's not everybody. Like I believe there are people that are trying to expose because they love the body, not because they're trying to tear people down, not because they're envious, but they are upset righteously about what those who are false are doing to the body of Christ. That is happening. That is the thing. But there's also those who are doing it in the wrong spirit and for the wrong reason. This is the fifth sign of a false prophet, false teacher. They steal our assurance. Okay, so one of the things we lose is the peace, right? It's like, man, the more I listen to this person, it's like they're promising all these things. And I, you know, my flesh is eating it up because I'm, I'm like, yeah, I want those things, right? Whatever it is, it's like, I feel like I'm going to get something out of this. Yet I, I feel anxious all the time. I, I don't have the same peace I used to have. But one of the reasons that that occurs is because we've actually lost our assurance in our heart that we actually belong to the Lord. This is 2 Corinthians 11, 14 through 15. It says, no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. So this is saying just because someone calls himself a Christian and preaches, quote unquote, righteousness, that does not automatically make them true. doesn't automatically mean that they're hearing from the Lord and they're doing what God has asked them to do. I've seen people preach against sin and yet then teach people to do things that were extremely ungodly. And it's like, well, how do these things go together? How do they go hand in hand? It's because they had a works-based form of righteousness that they were teaching. They weren't really walking in relationship with the Lord. All these are connected. They were not pointing people to Jesus. They were pointing people away from him. Now, I know that there are some people that love the Lord they really are saved. They really are believing in Jesus. And they lean this direction a little bit, okay? They, they, they are bent towards workspace righteousness a little bit. They don't realize it. And listen, that does not make them false, okay? So I'm not calling the, all those people out that lean that direction. That does not make them a false prophet or a false teacher or anything like that. People can lean towards error a little bit without being false, okay? And if you would say otherwise, my question would be, where are you leaning towards error? Because Jesus said, take the log out of your own eye before you try to take the splinter out of your brother's eye. Like, if you think that you have gotten everything perfect, congratulations. You're on the same level as Jesus Christ, you know, but I'm obviously saying that facetiously. I hope I'm not offending too many people by saying that, but this is 1 John 4, 17. It says, by this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, we also are in this world. So he's saying, when you stand before Jesus, you should be confident that you belong to him. Look at this, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment and the one who fears is not perfected in love. 
what is it saying? It's saying when we trust in Jesus daily as our Lord and Savior, we get to walk in assurance in the love of Christ, and we don't have to fear the punishment of God any longer. Why? Because Jesus took the wrath and the punishment of sin upon the cross. So one of these signs when we start to listen to somebody who's not from God is when they point us away from Jesus and the more that we put our faith in something else, the more we lose that assurance because that assurance comes from the Holy Spirit who is always going to point us back to Jesus. The Holy Spirit, he's always saying, no, Jesus is the way. He's the one. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's always saying, no, he's your answer. Stop taking your trust out of him and putting it in this thing over here, whether it be an object, a, a human being, a person, a teaching, a deep teaching or something. It's like, as soon as we take our trust and our faith out of Jesus himself and put it in something else and what he did for us on the cross and put it in something else that we have to do or whatever, it's like the Holy Spirit's going to be losing that fight in our hearts. He's saying, no, this is the way. This is the truth. This is the life. Because we're not going to be listening to what he's saying. And we're going to slowly lose our assurance because we won't be able to hear him saying, you belong to Jesus. We're going to be thinking to ourselves, I need to buy another one of those things because that first one didn't work for me, you know, or I need to make sure I get this kind of oil next time because that kind didn't work. Or whatever. It's like, we're going to go from thing to thing to thing, you know, thinking that that's going to do it for us. But ultimately it's going to disappoint us. It's going to fail us. Everything's going to disappoint us except for Jesus Christ. What does the word say? It says, those who hope in the Lord will never be disappointed. Here's the good news, y'all. 1 John 4, 4 says, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. This is the same chapter. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. If you have believed in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you. And right now, I sense that the Holy Spirit is saying this to people. He's doing this for people right now. He's pointing to people in your heart and things, maybe things you've listened to, things you've believed in, things you put your trust in that were not Jesus Christ. And he's saying, throw those things away. The Lord is giving people opportunities right now. He's saying, throw that thing out. It's not helping you. It's not doing it for you. You've seen that it's not working for you all along anyways. Why do you keep going back to it? I hear the Lord saying, why do you keep putting your trust in that thing? I hear the Lord saying this right now, put your trust in me. I hear the Lord saying, because I will never fail you. And I hear the Father saying this, because what my son has done for you on the cross is enough. And it will always be enough. And don't listen to anyone who tells you otherwise, because they're leading you astray. Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now for your presence. I thank you for your confirming voice in our hearts. I thank you that we do belong to you because of what Jesus did for us, because we put our faith in what he has done. I thank you that we can have assurance right now through your presence, through your voice, through your nearness to us based on what Jesus did. Lord, I just ask that any person who has felt far from God, that you would help them to draw near to you and that they would come confidently into your presence because of what Jesus did. Like your word says, we have confident access in him. I ask that you remind every person of what the blood of Jesus has done for them, that it covers them, that it washes them white like snow, that it removes their sin from them as far as the east is from the west. Like your word says, Father, you, you remember our sins no more. And that is because of Jesus' sacrifice because of his death and resurrection. And so, Lord, I just pray for assurance over everyone listening, but also, Lord, again, if there's anything in our hearts that has led us astray, anybody we're listening to, anything that we've followed, anything that we knew, Lord, something was off, or even anything that we, we just know is not good for us, Lord, I ask that you would reveal that to us and help us to walk in the truth, help us to walk in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and come back to a pure and simple devotion to Jesus Christ. Because you are who we really need, Jesus. You're the one. There's nobody else that will do it. It's only you, Jesus. It's you or nothing, Lord. You are what we truly desire. You're what we truly need. So I just thank you for that wisdom, that discernment, even the discerning of spirits, Lord, for those that need that gift, God. In Jesus' mighty name. And y'all, I'm just I'm gonna end this, but I just hear the Lord saying this. For those of y'all that are still asking questions, I sense the Holy Spirit saying, Seek me about it this week, and I'm gonna be giving answers to those that need it. I'm gonna be answering those questions. And for some people, the Lord is saying this. For some people, the answer I'm gonna be giving you is just you don't need to know. You just need to move on and stop listening. It's not worth our time. For others of us, he's gonna give us more clear and specific instructions as to what to do with what he's telling us. But I hope this message has been encouraging. Please share this with someone if you feel led to do that. I love you all so much. See you next time.